guys, I have some like karate chop moves. It's so important because. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. <laughs> I'm going to give you five tips with Christian. He is pretty much phenomenal at this. So tell him what you're certified in. I teach firearms and tactics um, all over the country. And I also do a lot of executive protection all, all over God's green earth. If you know what a creeper is, it basically can pretty much attack you in some sort of way, either trying to rob you of your handbag, your purse, even guys too, because guys do get robbed, right? Yep. Attack you by either sexual assault, kidnapping um a lot of news have been happening lately over the whole cleveland situation of yeah. those three girls that got kidnapped so many years ago and yeah this is like an important video for me because i want to be able to give you guys tips on how to protect yourself if you're in that type of situation hopefully not first thing we should talk about is your awareness in your environment that you're in when you're at the mall or the parking garage or you know anywhere um all over the country, you want to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. You always. Don't to, always. You know, always. No matter how much fun you're having, even if you're with your friends, yep. like a group of five friends or Night something, clubs. it can happen to a group of people yep. or just one. Yep. Usually we think of walking to a parking lot that's not well lit. That's where we usually be aware of, but sometimes, most of the cases, these sucker creepers will mm. pretty much be smart enough to attack you in daylight or um, would you not really least expect it with texting and walking you looking down and the person can just grab you, choke you, or you know, yank you into the car, you just yeah. don't even know. That's why we wanna be aware of our surroundings. We don't wanna have our head down into our phone texting away. Just like they say, don't drive and text, well don't walk and text either. <laughs> yeah, it's that's thing. like a first tip. Don't walk and text because I definitely do that a lot. Yeah. So it's kind of okay if you have like your friends with you, they're alert and around the surroundings then it's okay to look down but if they're also looking down you know make sure one of you guys are looking around while one is texting because you can't have both mm. people texting at the same time the first self-defense is pepper spray i know they do sell mace too there is a complete difference because mace is a tear gas and it doesn't affect like criminals or attackers that are drugged up or have alcohol in their system so it doesn't have any effect so that's right. the reason why we chose pepper spray. We're gonna also show you other tips, just in case you don't have pepper spray or- Gets taken away from you? Gets taken you away. So this is actually unique. And I know that pepper spray is not illegal in all states, but this one is actually called a diffuser, which is legal to carry in all states. Just not sold in certain states. And I will check out the links so that you know if it's like available in your state that you can actually buy online and you have to be 18 years and older to order it if you're underage i recommend the parents that are watching to watch this because you never know if you can teach your child i have a nephew and he's really young he's only one but i do want to educate him <clears throat> on how to use pepper spray when he's old enough like maybe seven when he's like mature right, right. maturity level is important not really about age so it's important to teach them how to use a pepper spray because you don't want to spray yourself. Right. But this is actually something that's really cool. I got a hot baby pink one. and It comes in black too because, you know, I'm pretty sure guys don't want to rock a pink one. But I think guys can rock pink. I'm sure Oops. they can. This is actually a sample one. It has water in it because this is a practice pepper spray. You do want to practice first before ever trying the real deal. If you just buy it and you put it in your handbag and then that situation ever comes up and you don't know how to use it, you pretty much wasted your money and your time and you're in that bad situation. Right, right. So I'm sitting there, I'm walking to my car by myself. Or jogging or jogging, anything. Jogging, yeah. If you just know there's something is off, it's always good to always have this on your wrist. You can also Put this on your keychain. It does have a key ring. Mm -hmm. We see that we have a wrist strap that we can adjust, you know, whether we want it tight or a little bit looser. Like Lisa just said, we have a key ring on here. Going back up here, when we want to activate the, uh, the pepper spray, basically it's got a little safety on it and you can't have an accidental discharge. Mm -hmm. You'd flip it up and then press down because notice inside there, that's where our actual release button is. So the top of this little flap is called our safety, and it's actually grooved for you to get your hands right in 
yeah. and the spray comes out this way. So this way there's no accidental discharges on you. Now, like Lisa was saying, there's a wrist strap right here. And notice our hands are all wrapped up here. That's a little <laughs> karate move there. But anyways, um, if the pepper spray did get taken away from Lisa, came right off that, <clears throat> that basically is called the diffuser part of this pepper spray canister and that renders the pepper spray inoperable. Well, the attacker is probably going to like be smart enough like, oh, I could just take off the latch, spray yeah. my victim and just, you know, kidnap her or kidnap him. But he's going to realize that he can't because it's actually off the wristband. There are other pepper sprays or mace or, you know, OC, whatever you're carrying. Um, you don't always get that. So this is a, a great little tip to have. Mm -hmm. We always want to make sure that we're walking ready to use this at a moment's notice. Yes, yeah, so you don't want this in the handbag. Um, you know, right. girls, we like to carry the big old tote handbags and we just toss it all in. And when you're in that situation, there's no way you can dig right. throughout your lip gloss, your powders, right. and trying to find this pepper spray. So it's always good to have it on hand. Like what I like to do is when I get out the mall, mm -hmm. um, usually if I'm by myself or with a friend, take it out before you even walk out the door. Right, right. And have it ready with your keys. You want to be aware of your surroundings. You want yeah, to be you prepared. Want to be aware. It's 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 like, kind of like having a safety plan. You know, when you're walking to your car, my, a lot of my clients that um that i deal with you know all over the country their their loved ones and even them themselves when they're walking to their vehicles they have their their pepper spray in hand mm -hmm. as well as their keys in hand and they are walking directly to their car and when they're walking to their car they are not just head down and you know in the dirt looking around there they are looking at their environment making sure that there's no one standing near their car that there is not a van park next to their car yeah so that's the which, first tip is always be aware yeah, be aware of your surroundings and be aware of your environment and then when you get down there um, and when you get in your car once you're in your car you lock your doors and then you just leave don't sit in your car and text away mm -hmm. on facebook leaving mall now or anything like that just yeah. get in your car and go see that um, all the yep, time so the that's really bad what we want to do is we're going to take our safety off by flipping the flap up uh -huh. place our thumb right on top of the trigger Yep. We're going to aim at that person's eyes and basically when I'm doing this with my classes and stuff I teach people go from the one ear to the other ear and then back to the other ear. This way that person, that attacker, that creeper as Lisa is saying is getting uh, a good solid dose of that yeah. pepper spray coming right at him. And this one is the water canister so I recommend to actually practice right in front of a mirror right. um, because it does squirt out water so you're not going to get that pepper spray in your face and the pepper spray is extremely strong. Right. What if the person's wearing sunglasses or um, mm -hmm. they have their eyes closed as they're attacking me because they're already on top of me? Yeah. Well, the thing is that this this is an, uh, a very powerful irritant on skin. So even if that person had their eyes closed or they had sunglasses on, mm -hmm. that 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 powerful stream is going from ear to ear and then back again, and that's going to hit a lot of their skin. Um, and it burns. And it's going to burn a lot. Now like, I've been yeah. sprayed. I've been sprayed millions of times, and it it sucks. We're going into the summertime, and the weather's going to get hotter and stuff like that. So people are going to sweat, and Sizzling. when someone gets sprayed and they're sweating, that's going to eventually run right into their eyes because they have to open their eyes at some point if they have mm -hmm. their eyes closed. And Definitely. even if they're wearing sunglasses, if you if you make contact on the forehead, that's going to drip down from the sweat and everything else right into their eyes, and that's going to put them out even more, yeah. which is what it's all about. It's just buying you enough time to get away from that attacker. So <laughs> it's going to take care of your eyes, your skin, and your respiratory system. With each one of these canisters, you get about 25 bursts, um, which is good. So that this way in case there's multiple attackers you know you spray you, non-stop right you don't leave anybody uh, left out give everybody Definitely. some fun <laughs> kick their butts that's right our third tip um say the attacker takes this away from you that's the important thing because mm. you know sometimes we're not fast like me i am not great with my hands like playing video games horrible at that <laughs> so i might be slippery or or sometimes i have hand cream and sometimes this can actually you know, slip by your hands or the person is just fast yeah. enough grab it so you can actually grab this for me mm -hmm. like say they like he's gonna be stronger so he grabbed it away from me it's actually disarmed so it's not gonna attack me this you is the fun <laughs> part <laughs> <laughs> not for me because i'm about to get hit no. um the, probably the first thing to do is 
Use your voice. Okay, that's the so number that's one. your third tip. Yep. Your voice. Use your voice. We don't want to. I what I use with my clients is instead of saying the word help, where a lot of people will be afraid to get involved, we yell the word fire because a lot of people are curious. Most people want to see where the fire yeah. is. They want to see the fire trucks and the rescues and all this other job. So uh, first thing, use your voice and say fire, fire, fire as loud as you can and just keep saying it. Scream, say fire, 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 fire. fire. Run if you can. Yep. If you're in public, someone's going to yep. see it. The attacker is is already you know reached inside that mm -hmm. threshold where you know is already in your face or on top of you. God forbid. What we can start using is we can use our hands. Yep. Self defense. Self defense. That's number four tip. And and this is not going to be a uh, PhD level course on ninjutsu <laughs> or anything like that. We're going to keep it very simple for people who want to you know put this stuff to practice right now. What we can do is we can take our hand and we can place our middle finger on top of our index finger just like that. So it's going to come this way and it's going to go right into the eye and we're just going to keep going back and forth. Just jab, jab. Yeah, exactly. We're, what we're doing is we're trying to create space between ourselves and the attacker. Mm -hmm. Once we have enough space we can get up, we can regain, get to our feet and, and run or we can get away from that attacker and get out of this, uh, that environment. Yes. So that's the fourth tip, right? Yep. The spike. If you have, um, some of my clients have like, you know, hard arthritis in their hands and it's really or, hard for them to do it. Or uh, just not really good at. Or dexterity, they don't have really good dexterity. Yeah, dexterity. Just if, if you can't do the finger spike, just put both fingers together like that. Just mm -hmm. put them both together and then just drive. What we're trying to do is we're trying to give both fingers some stability by keeping them together. So and we're make gonna sure extend that, that right into the So make sure that you keep them stiff and have your thumb, thumb right wrapped over the around yep. into like your pinky and ring finger. Yep. And then make sure you like just jab yep. all your force. And don't be scared because this attacker is trying to take over you. Yeah. So you got to defend yourself. And you'll be surprised, you know, when your life is on the line, how much, uh, adrenaline is going to be running through oh, yeah. your veins and how strong you're going to you be. Don't even so you're going to like be, you're going realize to be, what's going on. Yeah, too. you'll be very surprised. So that's number four. And then number five is basically either a fist, okay, or the palm of your hand. I like the palm a lot better because <laughs> the fist, it really hurts when you're like trying to punch somebody. Yeah. It's like a bone right here, yep. which you, t you showed me when we started dating because he wanted to show me some self defense just in case. Yep. So basically, you know, we have our whole arm driving behind this fist. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to make contact right on the nose. We're just going to bang as hard as we can yep. right into the nose because that's going right to cause the, the eyes to tear right into the nose as hard as you can. And again, you know, multiple times, as quick as you can and as hard as you can. Bang, so bang, pop. boom, right in there, boom, yeah. like that. Yep. You're going to hit somebody with your fist. Um, it's the first two knuckles that we want to make contact. Yes. The the pinky knuckle and the ring knuckle, those are not meant to be used. It's just the first two. I'm going to drive mm -hmm. right in. So use these and make sure you drive it right into yep. the nose. And straight, there you go. Just like that. Okay? Pow. Easy day. <laughs> Just, right. You just never know whoever is stalking right. you, lurking you around. Right. The, the the best defense is an offense, and you know. Yes. Have a good plan. Have a good safety plan. Have that awareness. That you know, instead of going down that dark alley, don't go down that dark alley. Yeah. <laughs> just keep on walking. Don't go looking for trouble. Uh, keep an open mind and be aware of your surroundings. Mm-hmm. My mom is like a self defense freak and. Christian loves that. Um, when I was five years old, she actually had a friend that I didn't know try to kidnap me in a scenario, but she practiced um, some tips on how I can defend myself and how I can run away or avoid the situation. So that actually put that perspective right. in real world life. It's good training. It's very good training. Because when I went to college, there's other situations that could happen. There's a lot of date rapes. Um, Make sure to check your drink, make sure you purchase it yourself. Uh, yeah. There's just so many situations and I've been to not just one, about a few situations. Even the creepy white van following you down the street while I was yeah. walking in high school. I had that situation. I pretty much avoided it and they were asking me questions like directions and stuff. And you know technology right now, everyone has a phone where they can pretty much look up where to go or GPS, yeah. don't answer them. Trust me, it's the best way is to avoid them. Don't answer, run, scream, say fire, fire, fire. Like, you know, just try to stay away from that. Because Remember, practice makes perfect. And be safe. Take so, care, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.